Hi, Ron. Thanks for watching. So what I wanted to do in this SEO audit was just to show you what exactly Google is seeing and how it's determining your position in the search results. And then also take a look at the competition as well to see where we stack up against them uh, and some areas that we can improve on and things that we need to do in order to, to catch up with them. So what I've just basically done is I take your website and I just did a couple of searches here for cemetery lettering and monument restoration. And there's a few companies that are listed in both of them. So I've taken them and what I do is I take all your websites and I put them into this tool that I use and it shows me all the information that Google sees and then that it uses to determine your position and your ranking in the search results. Now, as you can see, just quickly by some of these numbers uh, where you know a few of them or majority of them are a lot higher than yours, but let me just kind of quickly just run through what these numbers mean. So as we're going through it, we can determine exactly where our shortfall is and what we need to do to make up some ground. So when Google is determining how to rank a website, it uses two different factors. The first is what's called the authority or trust that it has in your site. This basically boils down to a popularity contest because this authority is gained when other domains or websites refer back to yours and then they create a link called a backlink. Uh, this acts as an endorsement that Google uses to build trust because others are vouching for you. So just to give you a quick example, if say the Channel 6 News does an article in, in Rhode Island about the top 10 best uh, monument lettering or gravestone monument companies in Rhode Island, and in that article they mention your company and there's a link that the reader can click and it'll bring them from the news website to your website, that's one backlink from a one referring domain. That's a connection from their website to yours. Now, there are a lot of different types of these backlinks that you can get. They come in a lot of forms, you know, blog posting, editorials, guest posts, press releases. One really strong and important type is what's called a citation. And that's when anytime your name, address, and phone number are listed in a directory, like Yellow Pages, Yelp, Better Business Bureau, things like that. Usually a lot of these are free. It just takes time to find them and register your business. But as you can see, just based on the sheer numbers, why Google is trusting these companies more than yours to bring them up on a list, just because of the sheer number of links that they've, connect, they've connected. And what that does is it increases their trust, their domain rating. That is a, a basically a rating on one to 100 on how trustworthy and how strong the, the domain and the backlink profile is. Now, don't get discouraged. Uh, I work with you know, most small businesses that aren't actively managing or doing any kind of marketing or SEO. Um, you know, they are in the single digits. So this, this is pretty much normal. Uh, don't think that you've done anything wrong. This is just, you know, in the normal course of a, a business life, unless you're actively trying to seek out these types of marketing avenues, then, you know, this is exactly what a, a small business website looks like. Now, the second factor and probably one of the more important ones of why you're not coming up in search results is the content on the page. So as you can see, Google is not picking up any keywords on your site, meaning you're not even in the option to be listed in those search results because it doesn't understand exactly what search results it should put you in. So if we just take a, well, let's not go through 500 of them. We just take a quick peek at one of the competitors here. This shows me all the keywords that are being found on this website, as well as the volume, the number of times per month that they're being searched. Now, this is where it can do a lot of market research, you know, both in target demographics and also in your competitors to see what kind of high volume keywords we should be going after. So just to use this as an example, Rhode Island monuments, that's being searched 30 times per month. So that means if you had that web, that, keyword being picked up on your site and your site was ranking in the top three or top five on the search from the first page, 30 people per month will be seeing your website and have the option to click on it and potentially generate a lead. Now, obviously, you're not going to capture every single one of those. Um, there is going to be you know, a, a percentage, but you can just see how the sheer volume of just that one keyword phrase can bring in potential of 30 new clients every single month. And then we repeat that same process for all the high volume keywords and all the keywords that are relative to the services you offer and then the areas you wanna offer them in. However, there, there is a, a, a formula that Google uses to find these keywords on your site. Um, so basically, if we take a look at your site here, uh, it has a lot to do with the structure of it and then also the amount of content. 
Uh, the reason why I say that is Google is looking for basically headers. So it's assuming that things that are large and bold are more important. And then it wants some qualifying content to back that up. Uh, usually we recommend about 1,000 to 1,500 words on a homepage. Only reason being is the more information you offer on your page, the more of an expert you look, and then the more likely it is for the Google to recommend you in the search results. Um, but also it's the, the amount of content is not just about a sheer number, it's where we can insert those keywords because as Google is counting all the words on your page, it's also looking for those keywords. So all the, the services and the locations. Uh, but this is where the number of words kind of comes into play is because you're usually only allowed to have one keyword for about every 100 to 150 words of text. Uh, so that means the more keywords that we want to be found for would be the more information and content that we need to add to the page. Google has really emphasized in the last few years, it's it's called high quality content, meaning it, it doesn't want to just connect a keyword you know, in a in a quick like bullet point to a, a keyword that's being searched, it wants to read through the content to make sure that you are actually offering the best response for that keyword search. So we need to add more qualifying content, and we can do that through text, through headers. We can also do that through what's called alt image tagging. Let me see if this is yeah. So the name of this image is 14. That's what Google is seeing because it can't read an image itself. Google has no idea what 14 is. This is where we can also insert some keywords. Uh, that's a, a very big SEO tactic as well. But if we go back to the search results, um, a lot of times, you know, some places will be running paid advertising. You get that up top. Uh, then we also have the option to be in this map section. However, this is geographically based. So depending on where the person is searching from. Uh, however, there are ways to optimize your listing here. So that way you also have a chance to get first page listing for those near me searchers. When somebody is typing that, they go into the map section. Um, and depending on, obviously you have to be within a certain distance, but as you can see, it's it's pretty spread out. So we can still optimize your listing to try to get into the top three. So you get first page potential here in the map section, as well as first page potential here in what's called the organic section. Uh, and this, the organic section here is where the more authority or trust that Google has in your site, the higher up on the list that you're going to rank. So getting more of those links or referrals from other websites helps you climb and outright the competition. Uh, now, I, what I would love to do is just kind of sit down with you and we can talk about next steps because obviously we don't want to do any kind of backlinking or any kind of behind the scenes SEO until we have the page structure set up properly so that we can get those keywords qualified and then start coming up from the search results, then worry about trying to gain traction and higher in search results. Um, just having quality content in itself is going to be a big factor. So what I usually want to do is build out the website so it's got the proper content. We need to let it sit for about 30 days to make sure that Google indexes it and reads everything and, and captures those keywords and then see where we fall naturally in the, the list before we start determining how aggressive we need to be attacking the backside for SEO. That way we're not spending money for nothing and we're not doing more work than needs to be done because it really just depends on how much your competition is doing. And you know what I can say is, you know, obviously the competition as they're established and they've been slowly doing things, which is you know what Google wants to see. It wants to see slow incremental progress, not you know big spikes and then nothing and then another big spike. It wants to see a slow steady increase. Um, so let me know once you've had a chance to to check this out. Um, I'm sure you might have some questions. Hopefully I answered some, but might have created some more. Love to either jump on the phone or you know, get in touch with you and, and meet up somewhere in person and we can talk about next steps. We appreciate your time.